Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide. This is a video series I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, this video is going to be a continuation in our TransX series. Uh, in this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're learning how to use TransX, and this is an important part in this series because TransX or an MFD like it, such as IMFD, is absolutely essential if you're going to do anything other than go to uh, the ISS or go to the moon and back. Once you, once you want to go beyond the moon, then it becomes necessary to learn how to use an MFD such as TransX or IMFD. And we'll cover IMFD in a, in a later part of this absolute beginner guide. So you might actually be wondering why are we spending time using TransX to go back and forth between the moon if we are ultimately wanting to use it to go to Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and so on. Well, the reason that we're using TransX here at the, in this part of the absolute beginner guide to go back and forth between the Earth and the moon is because we need to we need to establish a fundamental understanding of how the MFD works before we try to tackle, you know, going out to Mars. And since we've already covered how to go to the moon using other tools like transfer MFD and align plane and so on, then we have that familiarity with the task already. So uh, altering our mind to uh, allow us to uh, accomplish the same task <clears throat> using transex just makes sense to me because you're in familiar territory. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And as you can see, we are on the moon. Uh, by this point, I believe I've covered the trip to the moon in enough detail that you can uh, you can accomplish that now using transex. We did uh, two uh, complete trips to the moon, one of them we did sort of a more simplified method, and then the second time we went to the moon, we did the off-plane transfer. There's still more that we could talk about using TransX just to go from the Earth to the moon, but I feel like, um, you know, you kind of reach a point where you have sort of diminishing returns on your, on your explanations, and at this point, it's time to kind of move on to some new information. So now we want to talk about how to go back to Earth from the moon using TransX. And we already did the moon to Earth flight using, um, actually, and all we used was orbit MFD. We didn't even use transfer MFD for that. So you should know how to get back to Earth, and you should have that understanding that the Earth, uh, that the moon is in orbit around the Earth. And the only thing that we really have to do to get back to Earth is kind of get up off the moon and then get away from the moon a little bit. And then since we're in orbit around the Earth already, we will just naturally sort of fall back to the Earth. But doing that efficiently uh, requires a little bit of planning, and that's something that TransX can help us out with. So let's not uh, delay any longer. Let's jump into it. And you'll notice that I'm in the XR2. We'll, we'll be using the XR2 probably uh, exclusively going forward. Um, I may still jump back into the Delta Glider from time to time, but... Going forward, uh, you're, you're going to find very soon that you're going to want more functionality than the standard Delta Glider provides, I, th I think. So going forward, for most uh, purposes, we're going to be using the XR2. I'm going to go ahead and press the F8 key to switch over to these larger MFDs. They show up a lot better in the video playback. <coughs> uh, you have to pardon if you hear any wheezing on my part. I'm not sure where that's coming from. I'm just having a bad day, I guess. So uh, let's bring up TransX, and again, if you haven't seen the video on how to fix TransX, be sure to go and watch that. TransX has been updated over the version that comes with Orbiter 2010 by default, and the version that comes with Orbiter 2010 by default is in fact broken, and you cannot use it for this purpose, for going from the moon to the Earth, you'll you'll run into a problem, and that's explained in that video. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. So make sure you've updated to the latest version of TransX. So we're going to bring up TransX, and just real quickly, let me bring up Orbit MFD on this side also, and I'll just explain again that when you're sitting on a body like the Moon or the Earth or 
Venus or whatever. When you first bring up transects, this is what it looks like, and this is what you're looking at. This gray sphere, or gray circle, I should say, is the surface of the, of, the, of the body that you're on, and in this case, it's the moon. It's the same thing that we see over here. This gray circle is the surface of the moon. And the major radius that we see here, which says 1,738 uh, m, which is uh, kilometers in, in this case, um, is the distance from the center of that body out to its surface. And we have that same information over here. Actually, if we switch the DST <clears throat> to uh, planocentric mode, then you can see here the RAD, R-A-D, the radius, 1.738. It's the same information. And it also gives us our inclination, which doesn't matter in this case because we're not in orbit, but you can see here it's 39.56. And it's the same information that we have over here in orbit MFD. Again, I just think it's, I think it's important to understand what you're looking at. So this is what it should look like by default. And we're in stage one of one, and we are in view setup. And it says that we uh, have the select target planets moons. That's what you should be looking at. If for any reason it's on ships, then just press either ADJ or minus AJ, and it will go back to planets moons. Now what we need to do to get back to Earth uh, we're not going to target Earth like we did when we went to the moon. We targeted the moon. In this case, we're going to, uh, we want to escape the moon. So we either press plus plus or from the none, you can just hit minus minus. Either way, it will go to escape. So the idea is that we, uh, like I said, we just need to escape the moon and then gravity will take over and it will pull us down to Earth. So in this case, we're not, you know, we're not targeting a, a body. We're not specifically targeting Earth. We're just going to escape the moon. Now, like we generally like to do, we're going to bring up Transex on this side as well. Then we're going to press forward, which will create stage two of two. So this, so this left side is stage one <clears throat> and the right side is stage two. If for some reason you want them the other way, that's fine. You can have stage one on the right and stage two on the left, but I'm an English speaking person i read left to right so for me it just makes sense to have stage one on the left and stage two on the right now on the right side we need to uh this is what we're looking at by default uh, once we have the stage brought up we're looking at view setup and you'll notice that our view has changed a lot compared to what we have over here so what is it <clears throat> so what is it that we're looking at over here <clears throat> Well, on this side, we're looking at the Earth here in the middle. It's that tiny circle that you can't really see very well. And this larger circle on the outside is the orbit of the moon around the Earth. And this line is pointing to where the moon is at in its orbit around the Earth. And something, if you actually sit here on the moon you can actually watch this line go forward. And in order to show that, because I actually, I say that all the time, but I never show it. But in order to show what I'm talking about there, uh, let's just say we wait 14 days, if we sat here on the moon for 14 days. So uh, if we bring up the date editor, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you can see that the moon is about on the other side <clears throat> from where it was before. That's because it takes the moon about 27.32 days to orbit the Earth one time. So if we sat here for seven days, it would go about a quarter. In 14 days, it'd be about a half. 21 days, it would be about three quarters. And then, and then you know, almost 28 days for a full revolution. So that's what we're looking at. That's where the moon's at uh, with respect to the Earth. And if we sat here and waited hours and days, it would just continue to go around. Let's go ahead and close that out. Now, in order to get back to the Earth, we need to um, we need to burn. We need to lower one side of our orbit. Essentially, um, uh, more specifically, we need to slow down with respect to our orbital velocity around the Earth. Let's pretend for a moment that the Moon didn't exist. Let's just say that this was the, this was our ship right here this was our position around the earth so we're in a very high orbit around the earth at uh whatever we're at 350,000 kilometers something like that uh, if you actually reference the earth 
and target the moon using orbit MFD. You can see what your current altitude is by looking here. And our current altitude is 395,000 kilometers. So, so forget about the moon. Pretend that the moon doesn't even exist. Let's just say that our vessel is in orbit around the Earth at that altitude. How would we get back to Earth? And the way we would get back to Earth would be to lower the other side of our orbit. We would go to the retrograde position and we would burn and we would know we would know when we did that that it would lower the opposite side because this is where we're at it would lower the opposite side of our orbit all the way down to the point where we're at earth in fact i can kind of i can probably even show that let me bring up the scenario editor really quick and i wasn't planning on doing this for the video but i think it'll be a good explanation let's throw in a standard delta glider and we'll set the input focus and you don't need to follow this. This is just to show you something. And for the location, we're going to put it uh, around the Earth. That's fine. And for orbital elements, we want 395,000 kilometers around the Earth. Apply. Now we're done with that. So you can see we, we have the same orbit that the Moon does right now. We have the same orbit that the Moon does around the Earth. But we're not on the moon. We're just, you know, we're just at the same distance that the moon would be. So, if you go all the way back to one of our one of the very earliest videos on raising and lowering the orbit, then you should know that in order to get uh, in order to get back to Earth, all we would do at this point would be to go to the retrograde position, like that, and then we would burn the full power of the main engines. And you watch what happens. The opposite side of our orbit, so this is where we are at. Now the opposite side of our orbit is coming way down very quickly. Let's actually do a little bit of time warp to speed that up. And we would bring that down until our PEA was at some altitude that we were happy with, which would be, you know, say 500 kilometers, 400 kilometers or something like that. So we're just going to continue that burn. And we'll go with something like that because we're far out away, we're far enough away from the Earth that this number is not going to be completely accurate. So we'll go with 500 kilometers. So now we would simply warp time forward. And you can see our position here. And let's just follow it all the way in. And here we are, we're home. So hopefully that little demonstration uh, helps you understand what is going to happen when we go from the moon to the Earth. There's nothing special or magical about it. The fact, that the, the fact that we're on the moon only complicates things slightly because the moon does have its own gravity. So as we get up off the moon, <clears throat> we, can't just <clears throat> we can't just go to the retrograde position and burn our engines and then fall back to Earth like we did here because the moon's going to want to pull us along with it. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work, but that's okay. All right, let's go back to the XR2. And let's bring Transx back up on this side. Put our HUD back over to uh, surface mode. Take a sip of water and then we'll get set up here. Okay, so with... Uh, let, me, let me actually back up here and let's start over just because I like to make sure everybody's on the same page. So we have Transx open and we're going to go to Escape. Then we're going to go forward on this side so we have stage two. From the view setup, we need to change our view over to the eject plan. And now we need to tell Transx how much uh, delta velocity we need, uh, how, much, how much we need to change our velocity in order to lower the other side of our orbit all the way back to Earth. And if we're going to lower the other side of our orbit, that means we're going to be in the retrograde position. And that means we're going to be burning minus prograde. So instead of putting in positive prograde like that, which you can see is actually raising our orbit, it's taking us farther away from Earth, and that's not what we want. We want to get closer to the Earth. So we need to go negative prograde. And we just want to put in as much negative prograde as we need until we get all the way down to the Earth. And unfortunately, uh, Transx doesn't tell you what your hypothetical altitude will be, but we can figure, we, but fortunately with this new version of Transx that's been fixed, uh, and this particular, particular fix was done by Dimitri. 
So if you don't have the fixed version of Transex, then you won't be able to do this next step, which is to view over to setup, then go until you have the scale to view up, and then go to view target. In the old version of Transex, the one that comes with Orbiter 2010, when you do this, it doesn't work. It's broken. Now, once you have view target up, you can press VW to get back over to the eject plan. Now we need to put in enough negative prograde to bring that dashed hypothetical line down to the altitude of the Earth. And it actually helps at this point if we change our adjustment from coarse to medium, at least, possibly even fine, but medium should be okay. And now you can see that that as I'm adding in a little bit more negative prograde, that dashed hypothetical line is coming into view. And we want to bring it all the way down until it basically touches uh, that blue ring. It doesn't have to be exact. You know, it could be like that. It could be a little bit in. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just somewhere around this point is what you want. Um, again, Transex is not perfect, so trying to get it exactly where you want it is a total waste of time. That's why I say it doesn't matter if it's like that or if it's like that, we're going to have to do some kind of mid-course correction anyway. In later videos when we talk about IMFD, we will have more precision with our planning and we won't have these types of inaccuracies, but we'll get to that later on. Now, if you happen to have put in way more prograde than you need, negative prograde, let's say you did like that, and you see, well, the, the line is, and you have your line here, but you, ha but you notice that you have like over a thousand delta V. What that means is that you've put in so much delta velocity that you're actually coming back to the Earth and you're going to be in a retrograde inclination. And that's something that you really probably never want to have happen. So just be careful when you're adding in the negative prograde that you don't put in too much. The amount of negative prograde that you're going to need is always going to be something like maybe 750 on the low end and as much as maybe 850 on the high end. It'll never be 900 or 1,000 except in very specific situations where you're trying to uh, also get back to Earth and get your inclination at a specific point. But for a general flight back to Earth, it will always be somewhere in that 750, 850 range. So if you happen to uh, have overshot, try adding in prograde, take, you know, in other words, taking some of this neg negative out and watch what happens with this hypothetical. It comes around, flips around, and then goes back out. And here we are. We're back to where we need to be at the Earth at about negative 832. And I might even bring that down a little bit more, about like that. <clears throat> okay, once you have that part set up, you want to press VW to get back over to the uh, setup and change your scale to view back to either craft or all. Either one is fine. <clears throat> Now we need to focus our attention on the left side, the uh, this stage one of this setup. And here, uh, since we're already in view setup, the first thing that we're going to want to do, and you'll memorize these steps as you as you do this multiple times. Um, I have all this memorized, but as you're going through this the first time or the second time, the third time, you might want to make uh, like a get out a piece of paper or you know, bring up a text document and jot down some notes for how to do these different steps. But as you as you've done as you do this uh, two, three, four times, you'll actually just memorize it. But while we're in view setup here on the left side, we want to change variables because uh, currently we have uh, select target planets moons, and that's not what the variable that we want at the moment. And we change variables again by either var or minus v vr. So we're going to go var var a few times until we get over to graph projection <clears throat> and we're going to change this from ecliptic to plan now something i want to mention about graph projection is graph projection doesn't have any impact on your flight it doesn't change the way your flight works all graph projection is doing it's changing the way the graphics look in this mfd and that's just something i want to point out because when i was first learning transex and I was learning these different steps about how to do, you know, how to set up uh, the negative prograde and then to come over to stage one and do the graph projection. I was actually under the impression that if I didn't change the graph projection to plan, that my flight somehow wouldn't work. And that's not the case. The graph projection can be anything. It can be edge on, it can be ecliptic, it can be focus, it can be any of them, it will still work. The graph projection just changes the way the graphics look. And in this case, 
the having the graph projection set on plan will make things look a little bit better. Once we have that, we're going to press VW to get back over to the escape plan. And you'll notice that we have all kinds of new information here. The first variable that we have is PE distance. And if we press VAR, we go to eject orientation. If we press VAR again, we have another variable and then we're back around to PE distance. The PE distance is the first one that we want to adjust, but it doesn't actually matter. We can adjust the, uh, we're gonna adjust two variables here. We're going to adjust the eject orientation and we're going to adjust the PE distance. It doesn't matter which one you adjust first. And again, the reason I point that out is because when I was brand new to Transex and I was learning these uh, steps, I again was under the impression that like if I adjusted the variables out of order, that my flight planning was somehow wrong. And I thought that I had to adjust the variables in a certain order and that's just not the case. But it makes sense to adjust the PE distance first simply because this is the variable that you will see when you first come back to uh, this view and you change from view setup over to view escape plan. This is the variable that you'll see first, so we might as well change it first. Now, what is the PE distance? What does it even mean? What is it? Why does it matter? Well, the PE distance is its periapsis distance. That's what it stands for. And this distance here is the distance from the center of the body out to this point. And this is what we're saying we want our orbital altitude to be once we lift up off the moon and get into orbit. And if we do a little bit of quick math here, if we take that number of 2086 and we subtract the distance between the center of the moon out to its surface, which is 1738, then this is saying that uh, by default, if we don't change this, then we want an orbital altitude around the moon of 348 kilometers. That's really far out, and there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to have an orbital altitude that, that is that high. Um, in fact, this perhaps in some future version of TransX, they can reset the default to something that makes more sense. But uh, what makes more sense in this case is an orbital altitude of something like 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers. But even even actually five or 10 kilometers is fine. But realistically, um, the highest peak on the moon is just under, um, it's like just over 10 kilometers. So if you wanted to be realistic about things, then you probably want an orbital altitude around the moon of about 15, I would say no less than 15 kilometers. But we, I like 20 kilometers because it's a nice round number and it's easy to calculate. So what would be 20 kilometers more than 1,738? Well, that's just simply 1,738 plus 20. That's 1,758. So we want to set the PE distance to 1.758. We can do that very easily by using the enter button by pressing just the enter. Then we'll delete all that stuff. There's a couple ways we can do this. We can do 1758E3, and the E3 just means thousand, so we get that 1.758. But let's say that we uh, don't do that and we have our PE distance to whatever it was. Another way you can adjust it is by using the uh, plus and minus here. So if I just press minus minus a few times, and now I'm down to 1.73, now I'll do an adjustment. I can go up to 1.752. Now let me do an adjustment so it's you know finer control. And a couple more clicks. And now I have 1.758. But what I like best, again, is just to press the enter button and then 1758E3. And that gets everything nice and rounded. Because you'll notice if you actually uh, use your plus and minus like this, and then we get to here, and when we hit the enter button, you'll notice that it's not a perfect 1,758 kilometers. There's a few extra uh, numbers in there, but if we just put in 1758E3, then it's perfectly rounded, and if I hit enter, you can see it's perfectly rounded. Okay, so once we have the PE distance set, the next variable that we need to change, uh, we, and we said there are two variables that we have to change. One of them is the PE distance, and the other is the eject orientation. Now, the eject orientation just helps us figure out 
where uh, we're going to be pointing when we lift up off the moon and head out. So it's basically helping us calculate our heading. When we leave the moon, are we going to lift up and go to 90 degrees and fly out? Or are we going to lift up and like when we go to the ISS, we get a heading of like 43 degrees when we're on Earth. Or is that going to be our heading? Or do we have to calculate our heading using some formula? Well, fortunately, we don't have to calculate anything. The eject orientation is what allows us to figure out the heading that we need when we lift up off the moon and head out. And the way it works is very simple. This white line, which is called the line of nodes, needs to be lying straight over top of that green line when that green line is extended out to the surface. So let me press, just press plus plus and you'll see that this green line starts to extend out to the surface. And now it's touching the surface. Now as I continue to press plus plus, you'll see that line of nodes, the white line, continue to swing around and it's almost over top of that position. Uh, to have it a little bit of increased accuracy, there's a couple things we can do. Uh, number one, we can do an adjustment to go from coarse to medium so that we don't swing it too far. And if we need to, we can do another adjustment. So that gets us really accurate. Another thing that we can do to increase our accuracy for this part is to press VW to come over to setup. And if we go to the scale to view and go to target, now press VW to come back to the escape plan. You can see that we're, we've basically zoomed in on the moon a bit. So we now have a, a closer look at the line of nodes as compared to that green line. And that will help us get it even closer. Uh, generally, the, the scale to view doesn't help too much because this, the view is already zoomed in enough that you don't really have to do that. But if you want, you can uh, do that extra step just to get an even closer look. Now let's talk uh, quickly about that graph projection so we can see a little bit about what I was talking about there. So let's come back to view setup just for a moment. And let's change our graph projection from plan to edge on. And now let's look at the escape plan. So now you can see that this perforated line comes out here and it looks kind of strange perhaps from our perspective. But you'll notice that the white line is still lying straight over top of that green line. And if we go back to the graph projection, we change it to a different one. So let's say ecliptic and we press VW to get back to the escape plan. You can see that the perforated line looks like that, but our line of nodes is still lying over top <clears throat> of the green line. And let's do it again. Let's come back to view setup and let's look at graph projection focus and VW back over to the escape plan. And you can see now the perforated line looks very similar. Uh, in fact, I think this is the exact same view that you get when you have it set on plan. So again, the, the, the graph projection doesn't change how the flight works. It only changes what the graphics look like. And in this case, again, I typically like plan the best. So we'll go with plan. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up this part of the video is the, the, the eject orientation there are two ways that you can have it set. In this example, we have it set with the line of nodes lying straight over top of the green line, which is exactly what we want. And it gives us a heading of 74.53 degrees. <clears throat> so that means that we would lift up off the moon and we would rotate. Uh, in this case, we'd want to rotate to the left until we were at 74 and a half degrees. And then that's the direction that we would fly out but we don't have to go that way. If you change the, uh, the eject orientation, you'll notice there are two ways it can be set. It can be set like this, and let me go all the way around to the other side. You'll notice that that line swings around, and watch what happens as it gets around here. Let me just slow it down a bit. You'll notice that it once again comes out the other side, touches the surface, and now let's get everything nice and perfect like it was before. And once again, we have the line of nodes lying straight over top of the green line. And you might think, well, which one do I want or which one is better? You'll notice in this case, we have a heading of 254 degrees, which is basically 180 degrees opposite of what we had before. The fact of the matter is it doesn't matter which heading you use. You can use either one. They work just as well. 
The only difference is that when you lift up from here, you're going to orbit from this point to this point, and then you're going to eject to go to the Earth. If you go out the other way, let me bring it around the other side. If you go out this way, you're going to lift up off the moon at this point. You're going to go all the way around the moon, almost one full orbit. Then you're going to get to the eject point, and then you're going to go back to the Earth. That's the only difference is the amount of time that you spend in orbit. There is a slight difference in delta velocity because the moon does uh, rotate. But it, you'll notice if you bring up Orbit MFD and reference the moon, that the moon's rotational velocity is only, uh, from, from this landing site, is only 3.49 degrees. Uh, it's only 3.49 meters per second, rather. So if we go out this way, it's going to cost us 3.49 meters per second less. And that's actually not exactly true because there's some angle to our, to our flight path. If it was 90 degrees, then this would be correct. But it's basically going to cost us about three meters more if we go out the other way. And, and that's not enough to concern yourself with. But on a body that has a, a, a much higher rotational velocity like Earth, where you're rotating, where your velocity on the ground is 400 meters a second, it can be a pretty big deal to take off in the right direction. But on the moon, it makes no difference. So personally, I prefer to go out the short way. So I'm going to bring the eject orientation all the way around to the other side. And I'm going to get it nice and lined up like that. You can see now that that uh, white line is lying straight over top of that green line. And we now have a heading of 254.5 degrees, which works out a little bit better for us anyway, because that's uh, kind of the direction that we happen to be uh, sitting here on the landing pad. So we don't have to rotate quite as far around. Now we are over 30 minutes on this point in the video, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. And when we come back, we'll talk about how to uh, lift up off the moon and execute this flight. If you like this part of the video, like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Check for links down in the description. Please leave some comments, and I will see you in the next part.